So we're both New York Times best-selling suspense novelists who are women in a, you know, an industry that has long been the territory of men. So how do you think that makes us different? What, how do we stand apart from the male thriller writers? Uh, well, if, strangely enough, I think that we have an advantage in the marketplace because the majority of women are, uh, the majority of readers are women. And a lot of women gravitate towards suspense novels that have domestic issues. Yes. Yeah, you know, scary family stories, yeah. scary children's stories. Mm -hmm. And that's why they love your book so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think also that maybe women have almost, we feel almost freer to be, to be violent on the page. Yeah. Um, I think that when we have violence against women, it's something that we can come at it from the point of view of a, of a potential victim. Yeah. And I've had this conversation with male thriller writers. They feel that they have to hold back because all of a sudden they become sounding like they're sadis sadistic men. That's true. Yeah, it's true. And do you notice that the, the readers who have the bloodiest tastes, the ones that want the goriest stuff, are, are women? Yeah, because we, I don't think we are shocked by any of this. I mean, I work with the Child Sil Services Agency, and we have three very young social workers, and the things that they go out and they see mm -hmm. in real life, there is no thrill or novel out there that could surprise them. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so in a sense, I think that women writers are, feel liberated on the page, and, yeah. and a lot of male writers who I, I feel sorry for sometimes because they feel like they have to hold back. I think that's a very interesting point. Lisa, you are such a sunny and bright and happy personality whenever I see you. Where does this dark stuff come from? <laughs> Little do you know on these. <laughs> uh, we're back to the nature of evil and why don't we masquerade it. You know, I think women, again, we've always been the frontline providers of care, often in very adverse situations. And I think for me, writing is an outlet to explore some of those issues. In my real life, I'm heavily involved with special needs and at-risk kids. I have a community where we have an extremely... Um, vulnerable population, um, a lot of poverty, low income. And the more you spend time trying to work with these kids and you start to understand all the challenges they face, the more I become convinced, you know, when you look at how a society develops, if you look at the nature of evil and crime and how we get crime, that we need more social nets. We need to do more to help our kids. And I think you can get up on your soapbox as much as you want, and it's not terribly effective. But writing is a time to talk about some of these themes. Yeah. That there are opportunities every day to make a difference in future crime by, by you know, reaching out to one child, by providing that security net for you know, after-school programs for kids, and see the difference that you can make. And sometimes it's frustrating in real life. So it's nice to go to the world of fiction, where we get to control both sides of the conversation. <laughs> where we can help the character say, oh, this is exactly what needs to be done, and this will make a difference and save the day. It's therapeutic for me, and um, it's nice to get to that sense at the end of there are problems in the world, but they are solvable. And it's funny, because I come to, from, to dark writing from a completely different different kind of place, and it comes from my childhood. Um, oh, wow. My mother uh, is an immigrant from China, okay. and one thing she really enjoyed, because her English wasn't so... Uh, perfect. Yeah. She loved American horror films. Oh, funny. So, <laughs> as a kid, I was taken to every horror film there ever was. I mean, this was before PG ratings. Yeah, So, yeah, yeah you just didn't know how <laughs> it was going to be for a kid. So, I spent, you know, I was five years old and I was movie theater screaming all my childhood. Um, <laughs> That does explain a lot of your novels. <laughs> but I think that Ed, Hollywood was what educated me as to what was a good start. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so ever since then, to me, I'm, I'm just trying to recreate that adrenaline rush that I had in a dark movie theater. Well, Lisa, you have some interesting pictures on uh, your social media, your Facebook and, and MySpace page. You, there is a picture of you in uh, the cockpit of a helicopter. What What is with that, and what's with the race cars? Are you an adrenaline junkie? I am not an adrenaline junkie. I think, you know, the writing industry scary enough most of the time, but I do like to do fun and interesting things, I have to say. So last summer I had the opportunity to, get, to book tour with Karen Slaughter. We had a blast. We went to Fort Hood, and Karen, who's much savvier than I, when we were done signing our book, she kind of looked at the guy in charge. She's like, don't you have any interesting toys we can check out while we're here? <laughs> He's like, we have a helicopter, a fight helicopter simulator. We're like, okay, that'll do. <laughs> I think she was hoping for firearms, but I have to say, so we went into a simulator for Chinook helicopter, and it was amazing, and I crashed it, you know, about 15 times. It's apparently very hard to fly a helicopter, and you do not want to fly with me anytime soon. <laughs> and then in my real life, my husband is an adrenaline junkie. He is a race car driver. He's deeply entrenched in those circles. So yes, I now sponsor the Lisa Gardner race team. You can find photos on Facebook on lisagardner.com. It is fun. It has been a great way yeah. to meet other readers because, you know, when people go to racetracks, they sit there and the wives at least are reading novels. <laughs> yeah.
time that, that, that um, your husband's car has read Lisa Gardner books on it or something? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, as the sponsor, and then my daughter, it's a family project. She'll have, you know, she has pink duct tape all over his car, and he's been winning a lot more since then. So she'll Just, tell you it's all about the pink duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you need for speed. <laughs> well, um, you know, three years ago, uh, I got uh, my show, my uh, books optioned by Ostar Enterprises. And I've been through Hollywood, the whole Hollywood grind before, where <laughs> they option and nothing ever happens. Mm -hmm. Well, this time something happened. Uh, they cast Angie Harmon in the part as Jane Rizzoli. Very exciting. And Sasha Alexander as Maura Isles. And it's going to be premiering uh, in mm -hmm. July on TNT. <laughs> and the TV show is going to be called Rizzoli and Isles. So I couldn't be happier. The, the first episode, uh, the premiere episode, is going to be based on the book The Apprentice. And okay. they, they're re-releasing The Apprentice with Angie and Sasha's <laughs> pictures on the cover. And then from there on, they have a team of TV writers who are just going to build on the character, on, on the, the universe of characters, and make new new episodes. The novel I have that comes out this July, Live to Tell, it is definitely a thriller. It has to do with, it's a puzzle. It's a woman, a pediatric psych nurse. Her entire family was annihilated by her father, who then killed himself. Only she was saved. She's never known why. It's 25 years later, almost to the day, and families around Boston are being murdered, and they all connect back to her. She's the only link. Yeah. So it is an absolutely a puzzle book. Yeah. But it is told against the backdrop of a lockdown pediatric psych ward, and what does it mean to be a seven-year-old mentally ill child who is a good kid, but also hears voices telling you to kill people, and yeah. in the right mode, could kill people. So it's exploring social issues while entertaining, while having that puzzle, while having, of course, deep, dark evil. And um, what does it mean to be a nurse dealing with this? What does it be, mean to be the mother of that child? And then what does it mean to be a female detective trying to make sense of all this chaos? Yeah. Oh, so you just, you gave me a chill down my spine. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's really cool when that happens. <laughs> Would you ever be interested in writing Young Adult or maybe a spinoff from one of our existing series? What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, in fact, I I have been in the back of my mind. I'm thinking someday when I retire from yeah. Jane and, and Mora books, yeah. I would love to do a young adult book. And but it would be a spinoff of the Mephisto Club. It would be like a oh, teen, that's smart, a teenage that's smart. Mephisto Club yeah. uh, series. And I already have introduced a character in Ice Cold who could be a character that will be spun off into that. There's no better, more enthusiastic reader than a teenager. Oh, I love um, it. Yeah. I, I love teenage fans when they come up yeah. and, they're, and they're just crazy about the characters mm -hmm. and they really, really latch onto characters and think of them as friends. Well, we're both moms. How does being a mom affect your writing? And how does you know, your writing affect being a mom? You know, I think one of the things when I went to have a child, since I was already a suspense novelist, I was worried that it would make it harder, maybe I'd get soft, I'm not sure. But I think until you become a mom, you don't realize how many things there are to fear. I feel like in many ways, parenthood opened up whole new avenues of, oh my God, I didn't realize how many things I should be afraid of of all times. <laughs> and I think it's one of the things that balances the novels, that you know, on the one hand, you and I go to very dark places in our novels, often with our characters and our plots. But on the other hand, as mothers, we're looking at for that hope. We're looking for that redemption for our characters. We're looking at the end of the day, there are crime fighters out there that do help make the world a better place. Because frankly, that's the world we want to raise our kids in, not the dark seedy alleys that we so often explore. And you're right about how being a mom uh, really, it makes us afraid, far more afraid of the world. Yeah. Uh, and when I you know, think about what I'm most terrified of, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. It has everything to do with my children.